But to discuss this, what's the outlook from here on? We're joined by Amit Dixit of Edelweiss Securities. Uh, hi, Amit. Good to speak to you after a while on Ed. Well, um, give us your estimate. You know, we have a couple of European players who have come out with their with their results as well. Do you believe that Europe could surprise positively? We are in the vicinity of around $250, $255 per ton. I think you are at around $265 per ton. Is that a possibility that as well gets beaten? Hi Nigel, good morning. So uh, SSAB reported on Friday and of particular interest and relevance for Tata Steel is SSAB's uh, Europe division. Uh, that uh, reported a bit of an increase of 23.5% QOQ. Now, uh, we published a note on uh, on Friday in which we have clearly indicated that there exists a, a significant correlation between EBITDA burden of Tata Steel Europe and SSAB Europe. So clearly, we, in our forecast, we have actually 7.5% increase QOQ. And by the way, SSAB also reported uh, uh, volume decline. So uh, clearly, I believe that $265 per ton that we have, uh, I mean, is safe as of now. I don't see any risk to that. And what about for uh, India business, Amit? Uh, you know, GSW Steel, if you adjust it, then it would be a little bit better. But without adjusting, depending on which part you're considering as a one-off, the numbers are pretty weak out there. On the India business, do you believe Tata Steel can surprise positively for the past quarter? Well, that's a tricky one. Uh, to be honest, I mean, in case of JSW, we saw a couple of, uh, uh, I mean, actually three one-offs. I mean, two one-offs are particularly relevant for Tata Steel here. One is, of course, the NRV, the net realization, uh, realizable value adjustment that JSW did. If Tata Steel also goes ahead with the same, I don't think analysts have factored that into their numbers. Uh, that is one point. The second is, of course, the Forex translation. Now, that Tata Steel has reported always, so I don't think that there would be uh, a great deal of surprise. But then the uh, the dollar movement has itself been quite significant. So, you know, I, I won't deny that the kind of estimate that people have on the street around 20,400, 20, 20,500, that could be a little bit undermined by these uh, one-offs. Otherwise, operationally, I really uh, don't see a lot of surprise on Tata Steel uh, India, just because we have the volumes in hand. Okay, all right. And, uh, you know, also about debt reduction, that's been a trigger. Uh, in times of these, you start looking at valuations, and if that is to take place, then the debt number becomes very crucial. Are you factoring in any debt reduction for the past quarter? No, debt reduction, again, if you look at the uh, peers who have reported, JSPL and JSW, both showed the inventory accretion. And the similar thing I, I would expect for Tata Steel as well. So clearly, despite a robust operating performance, I would be very surprised if there is a reduction in debt, just because of working capital accretion. Now, this working capital accretion, I would like to add that it's a temporary thing. We have seen coking coal prices moderating, steel prices moderating. So that should actually get converted to cash in uh, in ensuing quarters. But for this quarter, yeah, I mean, there could be a, could be a minor, in fact, uh, debt addition from what they reported in Q4. And for the year, are you factoring in the reduction? Normally, they're talking about a billion dollars odd. Uh, yes, so billion dollars is for the whole year. Uh, I don't know how much of it would be for this quarter, but this quarter, just because the working capital accretion could be significant, I really don't see a scope for significant debt reduction. Final question then, uh, uh, you know, what do you do with the stock from here? And what is the current rating? Obviously, we like to chat with you post uh, the analyst call as well and get your take. But as of now, what is your rating on Tata Steel? No, we have a target price of 985 with a hold rating on the stock. We downgraded the stock, you know, after the export duty imposition. And uh, we believe that it's still, you know, there is a, there is a quarter left when uh, we are uh, we are about to witness the margin contraction and all. We would get to know more on Tata Steel, Paul, of course, how their, con how their contracts and all work out. But as of now, we are uh, circumspect on the steel space, particularly because China is exporting significant amount of steel. And it is it is well within the range of you know imported sorry uh, our domestic prices. And that, so domestic prices could be lower uh, here on. Yeah, I think uh, that on this import parity consideration. And what if the import duty is removed? Then uh, you know will you stay positive or is things still too too sketchy as of now? No, it's quite sketchy as of now to but, be honest. I mean, and we have. Uh, uh, mentioned in the note that even if export duty is removed, uh, there would be some kind of you know stickiness of it. People would expect that prices can't go that high. If they go high, government will come up with their own intervention. But yeah, we can discuss it later. Okay, all right. Good speaking to you. Uh, thanks so much, Amit, for stopping by and giving us uh, those details. For the time being, just going purely by the stock price movement, it seems the street is trying to factor in a bit of a surprise because the market's at the low point of the day. Tata Steel has moved to the day's high. But we'll slip into a short break. We're on the other side.